Children from the Paddington Primary School in Sydney learn the basics of conservation in a tree planting exercise. But how long will the trees survive? There are enough green fingers around to make sure they don't die. The hard part is protecting them from light fingers. A lot of people apparently regard public parks and public property as fair game. Would these children agree? No, because um, not because everyone else is stealing. And if they did, no one would have no flowers around here and trees. And it would spoil the park. And the police might come here and he said, Fine, don't what do you, you took them? Don't you dare <laughs> take this against the law and he, and, and the, the person who stole it will go in jail. <laughs> Children get on to conservation early, but it isn't the only thing they get on to. Have any of you taken anything from a shop? No. Would you? No. Do you know anybody who has? Yes. yes. Can you tell me about them? What happened? It was a boy. Yes. And he took some songs and he sung. Um, they were um, cats. And he can you took, tell me? Can you tell me? Yeah, and he stole um, ten dollars off a man, and and he got it back because he told him. And he got um, and he stole some thongs, and he stole some lollies, and he stole some caps. And he saw him coming into school, yeah. with all the things, the balloons, and all the thongs, and all, and the money. Yeah. And where did he steal these things from? Oh, oh, oh. A shop. Um, shop in Paddington. Like in Paddington. Oxford Street. And was he one of your age? No. 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 I think he will be seven. Class. No, he was six. He was in the lower class. On a Friday and Saturday night, 900 people crowd the bars of this Sydney hotel, a typical good fun night in the Australian suburbia. The patrons go home with a happy glow and many of them with a few more concrete souvenirs like $300 worth of glasses that disappear from this one hotel every month, like hundreds of ashtrays, towels, bath mats, toilet seats, paper dispensers, even chairs, like 40 bar stools taken in the past 12 months. Wow! Like billiard balls that are regularly played, then souvenired. The eight ball is said to make a good gear shift knob. The manager says that this one hotel loses through theft between eighty and ninety thousand dollars a year. Against that, eight people have been convicted this year of stealing the glasses from the hotel. They were fined fifty dollars each. In the running contest with light-fingered patrons, the hotel can't win them all. Neither can the golfers. At this golf practice range in Bankstown near Sydney, you can hire a bucket of sixty balls, all clearly marked, for sixty cents. Despite the markings and the warnings, the range loses every week an average of 150 of its best balls, a loss of more than $1,000 a year. At the height of the Captain Cook Bicentenary celebrations in Sydney, bunting proved to be quite popular. Fifty flags, including some specially designed for the occasion, were souvenired, as were more than 100 banners and several 60-foot lengths of garlanding. In all, a loss to the city of more than $2,000. The Pilferers Supermarket. Unlike the supermarket, however, libraries rarely take stock and rely instead on various forms of checkout procedures to guarantee, as far as possible, safe return of their books. But based on overseas figures, it's generally accepted that between one half and two percent of all books are lost altogether, and twice that number are missing at any one time. One way to reduce the chances of theft is to install a surveillance system. Popular with many banks, the camera is ready to record any hold-up attempt. Out of range of the camera, however, the pens are chained to the desk to prevent, as this bank puts it, the absent-mindedness of customers. But absent-mindedness isn't what shopkeepers have in mind when they prepare for a day's trading. Retailers in Australia estimated a loss of $30 million last year to shoplifters. 
This is big money and it's a big problem, but it isn't confined to the big cities. Springwood and the Blue Mountains of New South Wales. Czech-born Milan Dostal heads a staff of two, his English-born wife and an occasional assistant who lives in. The shop offers old wares of all kinds at prices from $200 for a pianola or a grandfather clock to a few cents for assorted bric-a-brac. People actually walk away. They pick up a chair, take, put it in a car and, and drive off. They, you know, this is, this is one of those things. I haven't seen him, but somebody's seen him. A must have because it's missing, you know. Somebody must have seen him. And they're quite brazen about it and, uh, and experts. They're, you know, lots of them are real experts. But uh, then again, there are people who come in here and they pinch something stupid, like plastic flour, which has got no value. And if, if I catch them, and if I did do something about them, they'll be in strife. Uh, you know, you only embar if embarrassment would be the least of things. And uh, so I let them go. Uh, but what do you do? You know, you can't shoot them. And uh, you can't abuse them, because uh, if they need the plastic flower, they ought to have one. You know, I think everybody ought to have a plastic flower if he wants one. That's the girl now, haul it down, little gal. The book of Proverbs okay. says at 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that, apparently, is only too true.